Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Psalm 140 and 141. Now, the subscript ahead of the psalm says that David wrote it for the chief musician. So, basically, uh, this is, especially when this, you hear the first word that says, rescue me. It's like David was constantly in need of rescue. But then he gave it to the chief musician to say, put it to good music and make sure the people sing it. That word though that he uses, rescue me, Lord, is the covenantal name that the Israelites used to describe God. So he's basically saying, you in covenant with me, uh, I realize that I'm, I have this arrangement with you that you are going to protect me and please, please do. And then verse three says, their tongues are sharp. They're like that of a serpent. Now, Jesus used that phrase, didn't he? He called the Pharisees serpents. In other words, you say every time they opened their mouths, somebody's life was in danger. And, and so David says the same thing. He says, I'm being persecuted verbally. People are saying things about me. Please uh, look after me. And then he says, and, and, and there's violence in their intent. He says in verse four, they're looking for ways to trip me up. And then he uses this phrase, seller, this word seller. We don't really know what it means other than stop, pause, think. Think about what I've just said. You know, uh, God, these guys are coming up against me. Uh, I'm being persecuted. I'm in need of help. And then he says, Sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer, you are the shield of my head in the day of battle. That's what you want protected when you're going into fight, your head and your heart. And he says, God, you are, are protecting me in these times of battle. And then he uses this phrase. He says, Seller again. And then he starts to ask God to deal with his enemies. And he says, may burning coals fall on them. <laughs> I, I'm sure he was thinking of Sodom and Gomorrah and the fire that had fallen out of heaven on those places. But, you know, Paul used that phrase, burning coals on their heads to show that we have a totally different way of dealing with this these days. Romans 12, 20 says, On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you heap burning coals upon their heads. So I think he may have even had reference to this particular psalm. You know, in David's day, he didn't know any better. And he said, God, deal with him like you dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah. But Paul's saying <laughs> You know the greatest way to deal with your enemy? Let God's kindness come through you. And it's going to drill into them the glory of God like they've never seen before. Now, Psalm 141, the psalmist says, Come quickly to me and hear me when I call you. Uh, may my prayer that is set before you be as incense and may the lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. This reminds me of Romans 12, actually, when... Paul said that our worship, which is acceptable to God, is a living sacrifice. In other words, not dead animals heaped up on altars, but our bodies as a living sacrifice. And he said, he's saying, take my hands, the psalmist is saying, take my hands lifted to you uh, as the sacrifice rather than the bull or the goat. I, my body, I am the sacrifice to you. And then he says, set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over my lips. And then I love this verse, verse 5. Let a righteous man strike me. Uh, let him rebuke me. That is oil on my head. The rebuke of a righteous man is not any less painful than any other rebuke or any other correction. But it's like oil on my head. It, it's going to change me. It's, if I receive it, it's going to change me. If I look back over my ministry life, when good people have corrected me, have adjusted my thinking, have, uh, have pulled me up when I needed to be pulled up, and I've listened to it, it has shaped who I am. And so that's what he's saying. He's saying, when a righteous man, you know, basically corrects me, that is good for me. And then verse 10 says, let the wicked fall into their own nets while they pass, while I pass by in safety. Uh, again, the psalmist is saying, my safety in your hands.